Learning to leverage points and miles can seem overwhelming. Travel credit card perks, sign up bonuses, loyalty program award charts, transfer partners, point valuations. It can feel like learning another language. But that's where the points guy comes in. I'm Madison Blancaflor, an editor at TPG, and I'm taking your viewer submitted questions, working out some options with points and miles math magic, and giving you some fantastic choices to turn your points into a dream trip. Welcome to the first episode of our new series, Dear Points. My husband and I are headed to Costa Rica for his sister's destination wedding. The itinerary for the eight day trip is already planned out with a lot of fun activities. Even our hotel stay is booked at a boutique property with the wedding party. While a lot of the trip is pre-planned, one large expense isn't, our flights. We are small business owners in Northeast Arkansas. My husband recently co-opened a new brewery and we're in the middle of renovating other properties for future businesses. We'd love to use points and miles to help cover some of the cost of this trip. That way, we're spending less time stressing about budget and more time celebrating Jackson's sister Katie and her new husband Ray. What's the best way to fly to Costa Rica on points? We're new-ish to the points and miles game and aren't really fully invested in a specific airline yet. Is that something we should be thinking about moving forward? First off, I'm super jealous because if you like adventure, Costa Rica's got it. River rafting, zip lining across canyons and through rainforests, hiking to waterfalls, snorkeling, scuba diving, and some of the world's most beautiful beaches. And the good news is there are plenty of options to get there using points and miles. They're staying in Jaco along the coast, so we're gonna focus on flights into San Jose. But first, we need to know their point status. Let's see what they're working with. They're starting in a great place with excellent credit, both in the high 700s. That opens the door to potentially applying for new credit cards with sign-up bonuses that can help pay for their trip. They each have the Capital One Rewards credit card with the combined 55,468 Capital One miles. Lindsay also has an Advantage Aviator Red World Elite MasterCard with 6,524 miles still in her account, but they rarely use that card. Finally, they have an unused $400 United flight credit from a pandemic travel cancellation. My first piece of advice, when figuring out your points and miles strategy, there's a balancing act you have to hit between short-term wins, long-term goals, and habits and the learning curve for figuring out how to use those rewards. These are two busy entrepreneurs juggling growing businesses, social lives, two dogs, and of course, travel. So they may want to factor in ease of use. That route might make more sense for them than a nuanced strategy. No, it won't fully optimize their savings, but it will take a lot less time to earn and burn miles. Perfect for busy beginners. Either route is okay. We should each approach it in a way that best suits our lifestyles and personal goals. And just because they start on the simple train now doesn't mean they can't upgrade see what I did there? Uh, to a more advanced strategy down the line. So to that end, I've got three options for them. Let's dive in. Both their round trip tickets to Costa Rica cost $1,050 on United. With their $400 flight credit, they could use 65,000 Capital One miles to cover the rest of the cost. If they go that route, they're just 8,000 miles short. First up, the easiest, but also the smallest win. Since Lindsay and Jackson already both have the Capital One Venture Card, if they put $4,000 on their card, which earns two miles per dollar spent, they'll get those 8,000 miles and bada bing bada boom, they've got their magic number. Since they are business owners, that spending threshold is probably easy to hit. They can redeem Capital One miles for one cent a piece toward travel within 90 days of making an eligible purchase, such as airline tickets. So they would book their United flight to San Jose using the $400 flight credit, and then using their venture card for the cost not covered by the credit. Then they'd redeem their miles through Capital One to cover what they had to charge for the flights at one cent each. Here's the thing though, if they're already spending that $4,000, why settle for only 8,000 Capital One miles? And that brings us to option two. It requires one more step, but they'll get an extra 75,000 miles out of it for the same money spent, not just 8,000. I'd recommend one of them apply for Capital One's newest card, the Venture X. If they get the card and spend $4,000 in the first three months of account opening, they'll earn its welcome offer, 75,000 miles. 
The card comes with a slew of benefits, including up to $300 annually in travel credit, 10,000 bonus miles per year if they renew the card, access to Capital One's airport lounges, which are fantastic by the way, um, a statement credit worth up to $100 toward a TSA pre-check or global entry application fee once every four years and more. This means Lindsay and Jackson will not only have enough miles to get to Costa Rica, but they'll also have a nice stockpile of miles and benefits to use on future travel. Win-win. Now I know what some of you are thinking, one cent per mile is not the sexiest redemption out there. You're not wrong but it will help them save money on this trip with a minimal amount of effort while giving them a new credit card that keeps their long-term earn and burn strategy simple, saving them that valuable time that they have so very little of. However, while option two is easy-ish and will give them both a short-term win and a long-term strategy, they're not getting maximum bang for their buck, or mile in this case. Mile buck? Y you get what I mean. And that brings us to my third option. Lindsay already has an American Airlines co-branded card, and American is one of the main airlines flying out of Memphis and Little Rock, the two airports closest to where they live. They can book flights for as low as 12,500 miles per person each way, or 50,000 miles total round trip, plus taxes and fees. With Lindsay's small stockpile of 6,000 American Airlines Advantage miles, they'll still need around 44,000 miles to cover the cost of the flights. Since she already has the Aviator Red, I suggest she applies for the City Advantage Platinum Select World Elite MasterCard. Say that five times fast. It comes with 50,000 bonus miles when you spend $2,500 in purchases within the first three months of account opening. And drum roll, that $99 annual fee is waived for the first 12 months. That sign-up bonus alone covers the cost of the flights. Considering cash prices for two round-trip tickets on American Airlines would land somewhere near $1,200, they're getting more value than two cents per mile. That's more than double what they get out of those Capital One miles using the other two strategies. Yeah, it takes a little more work adding a co-branded credit card to your wallet and finding award availability to book miles. But it's still on the simple end of the strategy spectrum. Plus, if they continue to fly often with American and use their AA credit cards, they'll also be working toward elite status through the airline's loyalty point system. Elite status can help them get the most value out of future flights and could be worth investing in if they plan to fly American Airlines regularly. So we've heard their question and we've walked through my suggestions. Now it's time for Lindsay and Jackson to make their decision. Let's go over our three options one more time. Option one, using their existing cards lineup to earn enough miles to offset the flights. Option two, staying in the Capital One family by adding the Venture X to their wallets, covering these flights and setting themselves up nicely for future vacations. One cent per mile in value, but more sweet, sweet miles with that new credit card. Or option three, diving deeper into American Airlines loyalty with the City AA Platinum Select to get more than two cents per mile in value and start the road to elite status. So. What's it gonna be? We had the best time in Costa Rica combining an incredible vacation where Katie and Ray just jam-packed that schedule with all these fun things to do, just getting to see the country, enjoy the food, enjoy friends and family. And Ray is an incredible photographer, so he came home with a lot of great photos as well. Um, just getting to see them say I do was for sure a highlight of our year. This gave us a ton to think about, and with more trips planned in the future, we want to go to Italy later this year, and Costa Rica probably as often as possible. This just kind of showed us that the Venture X is probably the best next step forward for us. If you're already planning on spending the money, who wouldn't want to earn an extra 75,000 miles that can be used for future travel? They decided the best way forward was to apply for the Capital One Venture X and use upcoming expenses to help them hit the additional 8,000 miles they need to cover their flights while also earning that valuable sign-up bonus. Redeeming miles for one cent each isn't the flashiest redemption out there, but it's what works best for them, at least at this point in their lives. And at the end of the day, that's what matters the most, making this sometimes wacky points and miles game fit your lifestyle, not the other way around. Redeeming points and miles doesn't have to be stressful. In fact, it should be the opposite. And whatever gets you on that plane for your trip is a winning plan in my book. That's what the points and miles game is all about. Want to learn how you can turn your points and miles into a dream trip reality? Send in your questions to dearpoints at thepointsguy.com. 
Until next time, I'm TPG editor Madison Blancaflor, and this is Gear Points.